The South African Bureau of Standards works proactively in communicating the importance of excellence in product design throughout the country. It's organizations like the SABS's Design Institute that give designers the tool to develop their innovative idea or product. The Institute came to the fore in 1965. It is a long history in a very interesting industry. First of all, the Design Institute is a design promotion organization and design promotion really has a history that goes back until 1850. Uh, and it started in Stuttgart, and you know Stuttgart is the city of the Mercedes and the Browns. So it, it's really design promotion is there to stimulate and to encourage industrial development and product development in the country. And you will see that all of the countries that has invested in product development are the forerunners. Uh, you can take uh, America and you can take Japan. Japan after the Second World War, for instance, um, has heavily invested in young designers and they were the people who've built uh, Japan. The organization has four key focus areas, design education, design industry, building South Africa as an industrialized country and design for development. What is important for new product development, I would say, is in particular our design award schemes and then the program that we have to support new product development, we call it the prototype uh, initiative, but it consists of a series of seminars and uh, consultation sessions where people can come in and we will provide services, um, confidential consultation sessions where we have professional industrial designers, highly experienced people, uh, a patent attorney as well as venture capitalists uh, to guide people with new ideas. Our design for development, uh, there we have interventions particularly focusing on uh, uh, communities who are s still in the developing communities, so where that might not have a uh, um, you know sophisticated infrastructure. This uh, uh, wind-up radio here in front is a good example of design for development, a product that has been focused on uh, for developing communities. The Design Achievers Award is an award the SABS Design Institute issues in order to help build youth design leadership within South Africa. The focus of the prize is to build the pool of designers in the country. Bongani in Tombella is a previous winner. He said that it opened his eyes to the world of design. The idea that won in this award was a concept that would help educate children on HIV and AIDS. Normally you go through a process where you have been interviewed by the judges. They uh, ask you to present your concept on the business idea that you think will help to educate um, children or community in a certain particular area the way you think it is relevant. Uh, in my case it was an ed educational tool that will teach uh, kids and the community about the, the danger dangers of AIDS. So that's where my concept was. So it was a kaleidoscope where kids, because normally kids like uh, kaleidoscopes, so they will look at the sun, you face it to the sun and then they can swipe the pictures on the sun and they can, while well, they can learn about the dangers of AIDS. In the first 40 years of the organization's existence, nearly 600 awards for commendable products have been made by the Design Institute. If there's anyone who knows how South Africa fares in the design sector compared to the rest of the world, it'll be the SABS Design Institute. That is a question that we always get asked. And one has to see the context in which we operate. And we must see, for instance, in South Africa, and you look at, over the years, the products that have received awards here. You, it's almost like a SWOT analysis. You see our strengths and you see our weaknesses. And you see that South Africa's strength is very much in engineering design. And in design like uh, um, mining, in the mining uh, industries. And also remember, um, we the first heart transplant was in South Africa. Huh? So we have actually very high um, level medical uh, design capacity. But what has happened now is that that expertise has been moved forward to primary health care expertise. So the environment in which we operate has, has changed. So it's, it's important that we must not try to compete with better coffee machines or necessarily you know, sophisticated um, hi-fi systems um, that we can buy from elsewhere, very well designed. South Africa must focus on where, where the need is and where we're good at. And that will give us the 
the front runner position in the world. And um, we already, as you say, you know, in many of the design for development areas, we are regarded as a, uh, as a front runner and also in primary healthcare products. Adrienne says that South Africa has its fair share of challenges, but its biggest draw card is being part of the African continent. Yeah, I think, uh, first of all, we must realize we're part of a global community and uh, we cannot act in isolation. So it's also important that when we talk about design for South Africa, we talk of our neighboring countries and very much our strength is also very much in the fact that we're part of Africa. And we are developing expertise, particularly for Africa and, and developing areas. As a modern nation, we must know that we part, uh, designers are always in the forefront. So the design world is changing at a very rapid uh, pace. And, and if you, you have to be on the forefront, also on the forefront particularly of technology. We're moving now into an era of open source and open innovation and crowdsourcing. And designers have to adapt to that, have, always have to see that we're working in, in a changing environment. This, of course, is also changing the whole role of intellectual property law. And, and how it, it, you have to protect yourself. Because at the end of the day, it is your intellectual property that gives you the advantage.